folks, Renium T here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. In the last part, we made it to Best Ways Bureau and met the Lapras! And I decided to hum the Chocobo theme instead of their theme because I know that one better. I'm sorry. Anyways, a taste of the moon. Right then, now that you're here, we need you to teach us all you can about your people and quickly. Won't be long before the final days are upon us and all their terrible grandiose, so it is imperative that we are per be prepared to receive our passengers to be. If there's anything, anything at all, that may displease them, it must be addressed post haste. And address it, we shall. Here at Best Ways Bureau, Bureau we have assembled everything required to offer our guests the best way forward. Yeah. Over this myriad of amenities to, we understand to be essential for day to day living, we wish to hear your opinions on them. I'm sure you've all worked up an appetite, so why don't we start with foodstuffs? Maybe the carrots orium, and we'll see about filling your bellies. But I don't like carrots. I have a really bad experience with them. <sighs> She's not one for enthusiasm. The notion of the theorist rotting to its core being a matter of course is rather concerning, though. Nevertheless, let us take this opportunity to learn more of the leopards and this vessel. Uh, head and head on over there, I guess. Um, yes, we can jump. Yes, we can survive, because, you know, I'm not one weird spy in Perthus. Survive jumps. And... Ah, it's so colorful! Welcome to Carrot's Orium. Here, hello, fate. That wow, someone's actually doing okay. Cool. Um, let's avoid the supporter enemies and be prepared to cry because I hate the stairs. 60 ohms southwest. You're about to learn why. I think it's here. Ah. Oh my god! They have not fixed this! It's not even up. It's up there! No! No! It's like if you jump too close to the ledge, you don't make it up. And it's really awkward and annoying. And I'm probably gonna have to come back up here, aren't I? dislike this place on ground. Uh, welcome to the Caratorium. Here we create prototypes of the various sundries required for it by our soon-to-be passengers. Let me introduce the head of foodstuff production. Cooking way! Pleasure to meet you all. Our work has involved no small amount of trial and error, but after many, many cycles of painstaking labor, I dare say we have created the finest cuisine our guests could ask for. I've learned all about the essential nutrients to it for a healthy and balanced diet from the reference materials we've received. Why, well, I've practically worn the words from those invaluable pages. Naturally, we've also considered ease of growth and production. We will not want for ingredients. I must insist you try some. We have fresh stock recently provided on account of, well, because we just woke up and we, we're all quite famished. Hop along to the plat along the platform so you can find a storage unit full of bursting and bur bolts of bursting with delectable delights. Help yourself to anything you like. <laughs> Hop to it. Hop to it. Hop to it, they say. I'll do what we're going back up. Because <gasps> of how they're like made, there's like a bit you can catch on the lip so it doesn't let you actually up. I'm really bad at judging jumps. Case and point. Oh my god. Storage crate. Go to storage unit and find a rainbow colored assortment of carrots. Um, I think that's it. I'm assuming orange. Here we're looking blue, vibrant yellow, or ominous crimson. Let's go with ominous crimson just because soft texture and redolent aroma of this crimson creation that belies its staggering weight. Excessive length and girth only compound the mystery, leaving you perplexed as 
as to the nature of this carrot. Yes. I guess we could have read all the descriptions, but... On second thought, you would like to simply take an obscenely large carrot for now. Due to its bizarre qualities, it would be part of the best cooking way whether it is safe to eat first. <sighs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Which means it's easier to go back down than it is to go up. <sighs> so the thing we're selecting to set your mouth to watering. We'll do this one, I guess. Since it won't let me take the the ominous red. Ah, uh, yes, a fine choice. One of my personal favorites, actually. Please dig in. I'm eager to hear what you think. All right. With a great trepidation, you take a bite out of the carrot. A carrot is oddly tender. As you begin to chew, a rich aroma fills your nostrils. A newfound vigor begins swelling within you. Only of your stomach, however. So just it may simply be indigestion. So we got iron carrot. You suddenly find yourself full of vim and vigor. What do you think? What did you think? Unlike anything you've ever tasted, yes. The iron carrot can be a bit difficult to digest, but the best endurance it promises makes it the perfect meal before a day of heavy lifting. We have plenty of other varieties too. Bleeding carrots improve blood flow. Dream carrots to help with sleep. So you see, we have a carrot for every occasion. Hmm. But what if I don't like carrots? I'm not even reading the other options. That's the only option, okay? You don't like carrots? Oh, you must mean you don't like them served in this fashion. Don't worry not. We have pureed for your urgence on hand if you haven't the time to chew. I take it you two had a wise remnant of carrots to choose from and not else. If I may ask, what exactly did these collaborators share with you about cuisine on the theorist? Surely you are aware we have an abundance of dishes and foods you could emulate. Of course we are! But well, it was only quite recently that we established contact. Even having a conversation was a struggle at first. Well, imagine our surprise when they sent a mountain of books and documents with no clear instructions. The sheer amount of information was overwhelming. If it wasn't for that encyclopedia I found out, we would have been at a loss where to begin. And so we decided rather than divide our resources to prepare a variety of middling and potentially unsatisfying meals, it would be more efficient to devote our efforts to the production of a single perfect food. That's all well and good, but man cannot live on raw carrots alone. Have you considered cooking them? You mean steaming, boiling, roasting, and the like? I suppose we could prepare the carrots in other ways. Our primary concern was efficacy. Uh, efficiency? What's more efficient than sinking your teeth into a carrot fresh from production? Rather strange approach to one... Uh, it's rather strange approach to take for one named Cooking Way, isn't it? Well, technically speaking, Cooking Way isn't my given name. When first created, we were all named in the old town. You know, that otherwise impenetrable parlance the Watcher speaks? After we received a great tome of words, a dictionary that is, from our collaborators, we learned our language. Adverbs, gerunds, present continuous verb conjunctions, just the basics. Then we found the terms related to our given tasks and used them to form new names. Aren't they helpful? No, not really, but it does explain a great deal. Wherefore didst thy de did thy kind deem such a change necessary? When the rest of your people arrive, we want to be certain they understand immediately what each of us does. You'd never be able to pronounce our original names anyway. I see. I hope our critiques, such as they are, were helpful to you. Now, if you should decide to preserve flora and fauna from a theorist as well, you would be able to offer the passengers a more balanced diet. Until such a day, when I pray comes sooner than later, it would appear there is not the carrots on the menu. <sighs> Style a hero. I think we've had our fill of carrots for now. Let's move on to other necessities, shall we? Our clothing production is sure to impress. This way. Oh my gosh, 
we're really gonna do an entire thing on style, aren't we? Aren't we? Where are we going? Northwest? Oh, by the way... I didn't know already, I have done FF4 Let's Play on my channel in the past. I am almost positive we come up here later, but gosh dang it, we're here. And it's up there. It is really up there. Oh no. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, 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 alright. No! Oh my god! <laughs> Doesn't help these were built for ancients, and I'm the second smallest race. No. No. Oh my god, no. 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 Up. Up. Oh. Sixty-one southeast. Okay, that's fine. I'm already crying over here. I may be purposely beginning aggro at this point. Okay. Be that one that's over there. Has to be, right? Here we are at the apparel production station. We've chosen to employ more traditional methods for this house, creation magics. Hydlin, in her infinite wisdom, blessed us with the self same affinity for magic her people possessed. We have other amazing talents, of course, and I know you're dying to hear about them, but I will regale you with the details another time. Said we did run to a spot of trouble at first. Our magic alone was not sufficient to see our work done. In the end, we discovered crystallized ether was a wonderful catalyst that could provide us with the extra V we needed. My, how resourceful. Ah, the sweet sound of recognition! You will also be impressed to hear it. We've read all about your habit of changing your entire to match your chosen profession. For the sake of efficiency, I presume, it's been also been taken into account with our designs. But why take my word for it when you can simply try on our clothes? Make yourself known to the workers and they will see to the rest. Oh boy. But I like my outfit. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. You're gonna make me go upstairs. Oh, man. <sighs> How did they do this? See, these are more my kind of stairs. Sorta. Of, kinda. Not really. It's you, one of the visitors from the theaters. Goodness me, mapping me wasn't kidding. You really are smaller than the watcher. Oh, right, you're here trying to set the clothes, yes? What would you like have me fashion for you today? Um. An outfit that embodies my bloodlust. What embodies your. What? Ahem, this will only take a moment. Him. There we are, all finished. A perfect fit, if I do say so myself. I would be lying if I said I understood what bloodlust is, but I assume it's something you enjoy. I'm as the clothes are flexible yet sturdy enough to endure uh, whatever it is you plan to do while wearing them. Would you look at that? Speechless! And there, I thought you may not like it. 
If you wouldn't mind to try something else, why not speak with my fellow artisans? I'm sure they'd be happy to oblige. You must continue wearing these garments in order to progress. You will change back to your normal garments if you move too far away. Look to your map for the garment changes area of effect. Speak with Larissa's lover to restore or prolong the garment change. <laughs> but my outfit! So yeah, it's just this entire western section that you have to wear it. We're doing it. My outfit, though. Uh, yes, it is glamour, but still! Yeah, it's good glamour. Anyway, so is guarding the stairs like a jerk. Uh, no one said you'd be coming. Uh, how can I help you? You just want my clothes, really? Oh, uh, of course, it would be my honor. Do you have anything in mind? Um, got anything with a little more flair? I think I can handle that. Let's see. This should do. <sighs> Some of my best work yet. Times and tastes truly have changed. It used to be so rare for anyone to request clothing with a focus on form over function. Thankfully, I would spare concept of, for robes made using a different fabric, and I think it looks rather fetching. <sighs> I was worried how the concept would turn out when it put to the proof, but it looks stunning on you. Won't you go and show Living Way? I'm sure she's eager to see what we've come up with. Let's continue wearing these garments before we progress. Blah, 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 blah. So you could this lever to regain it. <sighs> my outfit. My outfit. Can we just have our weavers do all the work? Thanks. And leather workers and all that. Thanks. Do we look splendid? The result of much trial and error. I, I know quality work when I see it. Shh, Indian speak. I can see your adoration for the moon and we love hearts in your eyes. Not all your friends feel the same having sampled our creations. Oh boy. Sorry to have kept you waiting. They insisted we sample all of the concepts ere we returned. There, verily, it is an ensemble most becoming. I think it's past time we return these clothes. Then our garments would meet with your approval. Whatever are we doing wrong? The watcher tells us that in his time, everyone wore the same robes. To do otherwise was against social etiquette. We thought we could appeal to modern taste by tailoring the robes to specific professions, but. Please, you mustn't be so hard on yourself. Should we resort to evacuating people of the theorists? They will most certainly have need of your attire. It is clear you spared no effort in addressing our needs, but you must understand that we are not quite so homogenous. Speaking for myself, what I wear now better suits my taste, even if it is of inferior make. But there are others whose choices may be influenced by traditions or personal experience. Rather than make assumptions for the whole, you must consider the individual and their potential preferences. I 
Superior, we've under underestimated the complexity and diversity of your people. <sighs> Even if we had memorized every tome we received, I doubt we'd have fared much better. Maybe we're doing you a disservice trying to shower you with our baubles and frippery. Thinking it was for your benefit when you'd be better off on your own. <sighs> there are some who might agree. People who prefer to keep others at arm's length, even when they know they shouldn't. As one such former fool, I'd like to ask you a question. This plan to evacuate and escape the final days, did it account for the reflections of the source as well? Um, not that I'm aware of. We were born of Hydon's love for Aetherus, and the salvation of the people in that star, and that star alone, has ever been our aim. Sure, it's better to devote ourselves to saving one world and divide our efforts across 14 and risk failing them all. I suppose you're right. Living way, might we have leave to explore Best Way's burrows unattended? You have given us much to think about. Why, certainly! Until later, then. If I may, I should like to accompany thee a while longer. Really? I mean, you're more than welcome to. There was actually something I wish to speak with you about. Let's be off then, shall we? Guys? Guys? Hi? See what the all the fuss was about. It's excited first, but now, now I'm worried. What the people of Aetherus refuse to come? What if we can't save them? <sighs> it's clear we've made a mess of things. Oh, but wait! You still haven't visited the domiciles. Once you see them, you'll understand how wonderful the moon truly is. I'm sure of it. I'll be waiting for you by the teleporter near the entrance. Oh, and the name's growing way, by the way. See you soon. Okay, bye. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and attempt to just warp back. So let that be a great start. Because, you know, I can just do this. You're here! You're really here! Thank you! Thank you so much! Sorry, when should I call you? Arya Ariane? Crikey, even your names are amazing. Well, Arya, we'll be using this teleporter to enter the residential area. Whenever you're ready. Alright, cool. Let's go. Ready in the teleporter. No. Well, you know, voice is difficult. to living quarters restricted due to reconstruction. Then where is it? Oh no! A private audience, as thou didst request, for reasons I know not. I'd rather I didn't have to ask the question at all, but I take my responsibilities very, very seriously. Do you and your friends by any chance find our accommodation wanting? Be honest, brutally even. It would be ungracious of me to belittle the efforts of thee and thine.
sentiment, really. But the disappointment is writ plain on your comrades' faces. It's all the more frustrating since no one will come out and say what they find wanting. to know. We can, we will do better. But time is not on our side. The final days will wait for no one. If your people are to be saved, we must take quick and decisive action. This vessel must serve as a home for as many passengers as possible for far longer than we may like. Which brings me to my request. Our collaborators on Atheris are doing what they can to prepare for the voyage. Would you be willing to go and lend them a hand? Having seen the moon for yourself, you could speak to its many splendors, learn what else they might require, and assuage whatever concerns they have. Wherefore wouldst thou entrust me with such a task? to put it. You're the only one who appears not to be wholly unsatisfied with our work. Or quite good at pretending that's the case, at least. Calm, collected, tactful to a fault. Very particular with your words, too. You understand that, in the face of great danger, one cannot pursue perfection at the expense of practicality. The difficult choices must often be made for the greater good. <sighs> and so fate doth conspire to set my feet upon this path once more. Musings. Tis no trifle thou dost ask, yet full well do I understand the urgency and necessity. I... Oh dear me! Dear me! I was terribly sorry for the mix-up! <laughs> it's a bit of a malfunction. I hadn't realized the residential quarters were inaccessible, you see. But you're still in one piece, so all's well that ends well, yes? Uh, won't happen again, I promise. What are you doing this time? Gosh, that was embarrassing. I promise to be more careful from now on. Since residential quarters are closed for now, I've rerouted the teleport that allowed travel between floors instead. Hopefully it proves useful in the meantime. Shane, you couldn't see it though. You really would have liked it. Now travel between the upper and lower floors of Best Way Burrows via, via the teleporter. Or by flying. All's veil, the ends veil. It may not seem like it, but we've been planning for this far longer than I'd care to admit. Each time we woke up, we'd have long discussions about how to save as many of you as we can. Felt like everyone had an opinion on this or that. But what the one thing we all agreed on upon was that the people of the theorists wouldn't take action to save themselves until it was far too late. That's why we're striving to make the moon a vibrant and magical place they'd hop at the chance to visit, rather than waiting for the flames of oblivion to get them off their tails and force them to accept our invitation. The residential cores may not be up to the necessary standards just yet, but there are plenty of other places worth seeing. I already had a look along, around the Caratorium, but wait until you see what's waiting for you at the east end of the burrow. Also, I see a quest down there. Including... One furry front. Let's go ahead and just take the even better way down. Just 
be honest. Just the better way and go do this current quest real quick. And well, you know. It's almost time to eat. Mm, you there. If you happen to be heading to the Caratorium. <laughs> God, you always make me on. Caratorium, could you let me my fellows know it's mealtime? If we don't eat, I can't take my nap. And he thinks. <sighs> you should come running and hang out to mention the carrots of happiness. So just say those three magic words and they'll be on their way. Carrot crimes. Excuse me, miss. Have you by chance seen any thieves prowling about with ill gotten car iron carrots? They're crimson, tender, surprisingly heavy. The carrots, that is, not the thieves. If you haven't seen them, I'm sure you will. We've been told that you adventurers are quite good at solving crimes and no one else can be bothered with. Wonderful! I'd rely on you to solve our carrot caper. Honestly, what men or fame would deny a lobber at their dinner? Anyway, our culprit, or culprits, took four carrots and all. Those are not easy to carry about, so I dare say they can't have gotten far. Oh god, I don't remember hating this one. I kind of vaguely remember where the right one is. If you're gonna make me jump up, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> mad or sad, or both. And my carrot, the prize you saw is one. Uh, carrots, uh, uh, carrot of happiness. What? They're serving carrots of happiness today? A deep, luscious orange, that tempting sunder to the wet. Wait for me, my darlings, I'm coming for you. My neighbors are being loud. Okay, well that's one. That's this one down here. So if I remember right, we want to go like over here for the nibbled iron carrot. What Darren Crane is telling me about it is prime. No! Oh no. That's first carrot. But just for the first. Iron carrots are not blue. I swear I remember it being over here. Muttering. Mm. These phosphor carrots really, really hit spot. Just a few more. What? No, what? No, of course I'm not stealing. These are mine. Is it so wrong to enjoy an early dinner? It's your own pride. In place of a place to eat in peace. He's about to not take care of culprit. Um. I think it's further west. I swear it was west. There's one over here. Oh, 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 oh! Carrot supporter? Blip, blip, Insufficient stock of iron carrots. Iron carrots detected. Initiating iron carrot procurement. Another attack! Ah! Beat up this carrot supporter since uh I guess I was right, it was over here that I was thinking of. Alright. So we found the iron carrot. Let's just go ahead and you're probably up there, aren't you? Yeah. No. There you are. There you are. What do you gotta say for yourself? Oh, my whiskers of visitor from Ethereus. What do I do? What do I say? And have you brought me snacks? Could I mean? Yes, it must be time to eat at last. Oh, 
my way for this moment. There's nothing like a carrot of happiness to fill the void in one's belly and soul. I guess up because literally is up, isn't it? Do you mind? I have stairs to climb. You're not gonna leave me alone, are you? That's cheating! This way. Take this cover of the roots and you get. Here's of happiness, you say? My, you said that to him already? I was working on projections for optimal power production based on the total population of the theorists and show that. Oh, never mind. I must make haste or I'll miss out in seconds. Returned, and everyone else is accounted for. Sustenance is essential for slobberts, though I suppose people are the same. In any case, we expend a lot of effort in raising a whole variety of. That lopper just going phasing in and out. Yes. Okay. We spend a whole lot of effort in raising a whole variety of carrots. Carrots of happiness are a new cultivator that are. We're not really comforting, though. Hmm, it seems a little silly how our workers consume so many carrots just so that we can produce more carrots. That's a problem that can be solved with even more carrots! I'm only worry about the two sales. I'll figure out the figure. I'll work out the figures just as soon as I... <sighs> what were we talking about? Go oh, say it! I was just yawning. You're back! Please tell me you found the carrots. It's harder? I never would have suspected. It's supposed to help us farm carrots, not eat them. Hmm, our color technician said something about enhancing its color with a loaf of carrots to increase work to increase work efficiency. But they go so far as to steal carrots for itself. I fear it may now love them a little too much. Oh, it's those poor carrots. But at least we know what became of them and how to prevent this happening again. Thank you for your assistance. Any time. Back east we go. Here, through this door, as great as a ends veil. It was named as such because it's the veil to end all veils. The most beautiful forest you'll ever see. There are some people with theorists like joy taking leisurely walks through natural spaces and the like, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. How about we start with a nice stroll to the fountain? This way. Cool, forest. Nothing will be weird about this, right? Nothing. All will be fine. But I don't see anything foresty about this. I don't. I do see a thing for her, though. Well, that does anyway. Alright, we wanna jump here? Yeah. Oops. Mm -mm. 
Southeast head for the quest while also heading for the current or something. Oh, hey, I must be at the fountain. My course south. There it is. Right over there. Let's go ahead and grab that. How are we doing, by the way? If I hit the right button, that would be a great start. Three to go, and I know where one is outside. So... So, what do you think of the forest? Isn't it positively pleasant? Simply sublime? Uh, um... I couldn't see the forest... Or the trees? You're pulling a tail! You're in a forest right now! Filling this place was a challenge, let me tell you. Since we were born here, we've never seen trees in person before, let alone a forest. The information sent by our collaborators was quite enlightening, but after much deliberation, we decided to use crystallized constructs in place of living trees. Thing thinks our atmospheric circulation system, this place produces air as clean as that you find in the forest on the theorist. Found here behind this, powered by the ladder. Large crystal adorning its top, plays a file roll, supplying us with fresh water. Much time and effort was spent in making it in the most spherical of spheres, and I dare say the imperial around this speaks for itself. I enjoy nothing more than a nice long stretch and a spawn of relaxation whenever I come up here. It looks like you could do with a stretch yourself. Stretch. Spirit, I feel more relaxed simply watching you. A sight worth the many years spent building this place. If it's not so much to ask, it's always been a dream of mine to take a walk through this forest with someone from a theorist. Could we maybe? <gasps> you will? Oh, be still my quivering whiskers! Growing Wave is now accompanying you. Alright. Let's go ahead and head for the spot right over here. Thank you, Arya. Then I could be more helpful to you by teaching you a lot about the little about the moon and what it is we do. When we were first created, the moon's sole purpose was to hold so the ark, but there was absolutely nothing to be found here. Eventually, Highland gave us our first task: furnish the moon with propulsion systems capable of facilitating travel to the other stars. It sounds impa impressive, and I suppose in some respects it is. But it was only possible thanks to all the knowledge Highland shared with us. We also had a lot of time to get it done. Six thousand years, give or take. Anyways, let's keep going. Alright. Let's go ahead and hit up this conversation point, which we can see thanks to the map. And ask if you can taste the rainbow crystal. What? No! I'm not sure what it is you do with crystals in the theorist, but we don't eat them. And certainly not this one. It's supposed to be all six elements. Wind, lightning, fire, earth, ice, and water. Those crystals like we use crystals like these to maintain the moon's e elemental equilibrium. It's worth mentioning though that because of Highland's influence, being the embodiment of tranquility and stasis and all, manipulating the elements here is different than it might be in the theorist. Conjuring a fire would sooner dry your clothes and singe them. For example, put simply, the etheric conditions are ill suited for to growth, which is why the surface is mostly barren. Of course, this was all necessary to keep the raging energies of Zodiac in check. And of course. Used to be that you had to walk. All this. This may come as a surprise, but we didn't begin building the habitable areas until after propulsion systems were ready. Considering how long it took, I wish we'd start sooner. Who would have thought we'd need 4,000 years to make all this? It certainly wasn't wor work you'd dare rush either. We had to create infrastructure and countless support s supporting systems, some of which wouldn't be operational until hundreds of years later. And then there was that brief period where our productivity came to a screeching halt. 
Wasn't that bizarre? Red Salad was sent through the Earth? It's the elegant mischief, I think. We thought maybe some new and nefarious actor was colluding with Zodiac. All we could do was stand by and brace ourselves for the worst. Can't tell you how relieved we were when Hyland informed us of its destruction. Oh, yes, there was a joyous humming that day. Yes, very joyous humming that day. Very, very joyous. Say, do you notice anything peculiar about the treetops? I mean, apart from the fact they're massive crystals and not trees. I'll give you a hint. As glowing rings emanate from the glowing spheres. Along with the device fixed near the ceiling, they feel real similar to our sun, and do so better even. The sun and similar celestial objects in the greater gray spans radiate energy that is harmful to your, our, your bodies. These rings shield you from that energy while allowing you to bathe in the perfect amount of sunlight. Or rather, a close approximation of it. Pretty present, what you say. Oh, and if you look closely, you'll see different types of trees have ever so slightly different curvature. Yes, indeed, this forest truly is the greatest! Yes! What's the word I'd use for it? Ah. There was something else I want to tell you about. Uh, oh, right. Propulsion systems and habitat facilities were completed about 200 years ago, and with that, the most important features were fit for purpose. Which is all well and good, except we still knew absolutely nothing about the present-day people of the theorists. Why not go and visit the theorists yourself, you might ask? Strictly forbidden. Were our technology and knowledge of the moon's true purpose explained for the evil ends, the results could be disastrous. Then there were a few more rejoinings. It became increasingly difficult to converse with Heidelin. Fearful we might lose the ability to communicate with her altogether, we beseeched her to find people at theorists we could trust to help. We were quite fortunate everything worked out as it did. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank God. It's probably unvoiced, though. With the exception of routine inspections and maintenance, we remained asleep and waited. Hopeful Hyland would find someone who would help us. Eventually, she did, and though her power was waning, we were able to speak to them directly for a short while. We shared with them everything we could, including our knowledge of the heavens and the means to travel here to the moon. They certainly didn't waste any time with what we taught them. No more than a few years after that, our collaborators found the means to convey messages and supplies to us from down below. With all, the, with all the letters, books, and other resources they sent, we learned enough to start making more meaningful changes to the moon. And now you're here, hopefully, enjoying yourself as much as I am. I knew you would like Greatest Ends Vale. I knew it. Thank you again for coming here, by the way. I know it was just a walk through the forest, but it meant a lot to me. There you are. I take you've already received the grand tour. Shame we missed it. Growing way! I've been looking all over for you! Teleport in a residential area. No, never mind that. We have more pressing matters at hand. I'll be calling an emergency meeting shortly, and your attendance is required. Really? I can't imagine why you need me there, but if you insist. We won't be away long, so you are all, you all are more than welcome to continue looking around the borough. Now come along, growing way. Before we arrived, you seem to be in the midst of a rousing conversation with your guide. Did you learn anything of import? I spent 12,000 years preparing for this. With the appointed hour of fast approaching, I can certainly understand their restlessness, but still. It remains to be seen that the people can be persuaded to evacuate when there are yet no signs of the final days. What's more, the technology of this place defies imagination. I doubt there are many who have readily come to terms with living in such surroundings. Whoever these collaborators are, unless they are possessed of the world's most charming personalities or means to forcibly evacuate people, they will meet with a great deal of resistance. Indeed, even if faith was annihilation, the decision to forsake all one knows cannot be made lightly.
Forgive me, friends, but I must beg your leave. There is another matter which yet begs for my attention. Uh, of course, we can accompany if you'd like. Nay, that will not be necessary. If you will excuse me. Buddy, you've done this in the past. Hmm. It is clear now that difficult decisions lie ahead of us. Preparation for the evacuation of Atheris is indeed crucial, but I am not yet willing to forsake our world and its reflections, and I trust I am not alone in my re reticence. No. Back to old tricks. Did RMJ seem strange to you? More so than usual, I mean. I know he has a penchant for keeping his own counsel, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried. Would you go and see if he's alright? Ishtul and I will remain here and see what else we can learn about the final days. If you hurry, perhaps you can catch up to him? Why did I close the map? Force of habit. Silly. We weren't doing that. appears to be heading towards the entrance the best way is burrow. Alright. Let's head to the entrance. Not using the teleporter because it's out of the way. Ventures off into Mari Laman's forum for reasons unknown. You must try carefully, else he might sense your presence. He probably already does, to be honest. Follow well, around Jay from a safe distance. We don't fail if you don't Yep, we're doing it again, folks. I'm just gonna go ahead and hang out right and hang out with Argos for a little bit. Hey, buddy. Are you still going? Still going? Still going? Who's there? Yeah, it's kind of chill back here. Looking it. Dot dot dot. There he is. What? You saw my like hair. <gasps> Catch up to him right here, can't you? Alright, so left. Make sure. 
sure I'm well enough hidden, apparently. So we're like a mile away. How did he see me? We're just gonna hang here. Who's there? You see nothing. You see nothing. We're gonna hang more back here apparently so he doesn't see me see you see nothing let's actually sprint this time he is once again booking it cool we are back outside Yay! Of course, I got caught at the last point! Every time. Thine arrival is timely as ever. Thou didst chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? was not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy? And duplicity? When Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life, I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for her mercy. Would that I could say the same for Menphilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain brokered by my hand were the scions robbed of a dear comrade and Flamine her beloved daughter. Two souls whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved even had I thought to protest. But protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives, ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighs heavy on my mind as does the memory of another lost to mine inaction. Dearest Moonbrida, who did face death unflinching, that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. In her hour of need, I did naught. Dutiful disciple of Louisois, ever looking to the greater good, Had I shut mine eyes and bid her live instead, mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind, but could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught. Subterfuge and sacrifice. May have the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. The calamity of Amorot was a tragedy beyond reckoning. 
One which must never again come to pass. Thus must we struggle, haunted by ghosts of those we have lost, clinging to those we pray we can yet save. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? Sometimes there isn't a right answer. I am not alone in my discomfort then. It is surprising, though perhaps not. We Scions are wont to debate strategy at length, but are resolute and unwavering in execution. Strange. Scarcely can I remember when last we spoke alone, and so candidly. I thank thee. For all my supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperitz proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. It would be to our mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. A concern I should be glad to address on the Scion's behalf. To dispense with all pretense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. But we cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. And today. What are they saying? Curse these ears! I've had bowel! No matter. We've got our plans. Hmm. In truth, my reason for traveling hither was to plan affect a plan of mine own. A plan which may pave a way forward for us all. May, I say, for there is no guarantee of success. Tis the reason I set out alone. That failure, should it come, would be mine to bear alone. Yet thou standest before me with proffered hand and open heart. Could be remiss of me to refuse thy amity. And so I ask, wouldst thou join in mine endeavor? Sure. However, I... Well, we'll join up with him next time. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing. If you really enjoyed it, consider supporting the channel. All the support really helps keep being content like this and more. You can find the links for that in the description, along with links to me on social media. So thank you again for watching, and until next time, this is Rene MT signing out. Bye!